Hey, this is Joel Cameron. Thank you for checking out this video. Um, in this video, I'm going to work on the bottom snare mic, uh, getting some dynamic control and some isolation over the bottom snare mic on a drum kit. Um, in this particular track, uh, the drums actually have a bit of ghost that happens, and you can really hear it on the bottom snare mic. All those, all those types of, of things uh, in the track, I want to be able to hear those things. If you have a drummer that's not doing that, it's just playing two and four backbeats, um, what I'm doing to this track really isn't even necessary because any leakage that that mic is picking up um, does not compete with that backbeat. That backbeat is clearly the loudest thing. But when there's ghosting involved, I want to bring some of that ghosting out. And as I bring that ghosting out, I'm going to then want to isolate the track. So I'm actually going to do two things at once. I'm not just going to isolate this. I'm actually going to go ahead and compress it. I'm saving the compression for, of drums for later. Um, but I, I want to go ahead for the sake of, of, of this track to compress now because it's after the compression that I then want to be able to do the isolating. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and start playing this. See, you can hear that backbeat is clearly the loudest thing. That's why if there's really no ghosting, and in this part there's really not much ghosting to speak of. But there does come some ghosting later. So I'm going to go ahead and put a compressor on this. Whoops, that is not a compressor. That is a de-esser. Try this again. Compressor. Thank you very much. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a really fast attack because I don't want much attack transient to get through. What I'm trying to do is even out the amount of snare response from the ghosting as from the snare hits. So I'm going to bring it up. So it's compressing pretty dramatically. All right, so that's pretty contained. And I can actually bring the output up a little bit more. Now, I'm gonna put this back in the mix. It's not gonna sound great because of the leakage, but I want you to hear the backbeat relationship. See, with the backbeat, that's nice. It gives you a good amount of snare response, and that sounds cool. What is not so nice is that now, because of that compression, that allows you to hear the You can hear that ghosting more. You can bring it out a little bit more. Okay. But now we got a problem because that snare is rattling just as much with the kick drum as it is with anything else. So to deal with that, I'm going to do a similar thing like I did with the outside of the kick drum. Rather than trying to gate such an odd, fluffy sound. I'm going to put another compressor in. I'm gonna come over here to the kick drum, the internal kick drum track, which is, the, I'm using the internal mic because it's more defined than the external mic and because it's closer to the attack, uh, or rather to the, the, to the batter head. So it is also the fastest to respond. Pre-fader send. You can pick whatever send that you want. I tend to use 31 and 32. I kind of work my way backwards. Um, I don't know, I just do. We're gonna key off of that, which is bus 31. So the compressor on the bottom, the second compressor on the bottom of the snare is now keyed off of, and I will click the key on the side chain so it will listen to the bass drum. So now it's compressing on the bass drum hits, and I'm gonna make the attack as fast as possible. Same deal here, speed of sound. That kick drum, Mike is hearing the kick drum a little faster than the bottom of the snare drum. Actually, they're probably pretty closely placed, but that kick mic is probably closer to the batter head than the bottom snare mic is. So I'm gonna do the attack as fast as possible. And I'm gonna slow the release a little. Maybe a lot.
And that's pretty much what I want. So, bypass. You're getting the sound of the drum itself, kick drum itself, with the snare response when it's bypassed. With, with it in there, it removes most of that. So, and actually allows you to be able to turn up the bottom head a lot for people who like a, a lot of it. I don't, that's too much for me, right about. That's not bad right there. And it's going to depend, obviously, if you've got a lot of mid-range instruments, you know, electric cabinets and things like that going on in your mix. You might want more snare to compete with that. If it's a little bit more of an open mix, you might want less because you can hear more. But that right there allows you to get plenty of bottom. But the bass drum isn't setting it off. If that's too much and you do like some of that natural interaction, you can increase the threshold on that compressor. So it doesn't compress quite as much. And that's pretty much it. So, long video. Thank you for watching. Uh, next time, I will move on to other elements of the kit. Appreciate it.